All right, let's get started. In 90% of interviews, the first question about HTML sounds like this. What is doc type and why is it used? Doc type is used to specify the document type, and usually this is sufficient. However, the answer can be expanded a bit. It is added as the first line of any HTML or XHTML document. It serves to help the browser understand how to interpret the page and which standard to follow when parsing the document. Based on this, the browser will determine which tags are considered valid and which are outdated. Question 2. Can you describe the basic structure of an HTML page? At the very top, the doc type is mandatory. After that, the main HTML tag follows, which is the root wrapper of the page. Inside the HTML tag, there are two main blocks. Head. This is an auxiliary tag that contains all the necessary data about the HTML document. Inside this tag, there can be a title, description, SEO information, links to styles, fonts, and meta information. The data inside this tag does not appear on the page. Body. This tag contains all the markup of the HTML document. This markup is what will be displayed in the browser. Question 3. What is semantics? And what semantic tags do you know? Semantics in the context of HTML refers to the use of the correct tags that describe the content inside them. A semantic tag is a tag that carries a meaningful explanation, meaning it has an explanation of its purpose. In other words, each element on a web page corresponds to the correct semantic meaning. For example, if we have a block of text, it should most likely be wrapped in a P tag, and if it's a heading, it should be in an H tag. As for semantic tags, you can see examples on the screen. There are many of them, and it's easier to list those that are not semantic. The main idea is that the tag should make it clear what content is inside it. Question 4. What's the difference between strong, M and B I tags? This question illustrates the semantics of elements very well. If you look at the result in the browser, the strong and B tags make the text bold, while the EM and I tags make it italic. However, the strong and M tags are intended to add logical emphasis to the wrapped element. For example, within a paragraph, a wrapped word will not only be highlighted, but when the page is read by search engines or screen readers, emphasis will be placed on it. Meanwhile, the B and I tags simply change the visual appearance of the wrapped element, without adding any semantics or emphasis. Let's move on to CSS. What is CSS and what is it used for? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It is used to add various styles to an HTML page. While plain HTML represents the basic structure of a web page, the task of adding visual effects lies with CSS. Question 6. What are the different ways to add CSS to a page? There are four main ways to add styles to a page. The first is using inline styles, where CSS properties are added to a specific element using the style attribute. The second is using global styles, where a style tag is added to the head section, inside which the styles are defined. The third is using an external file, where all the styles are added in a separate document with a CSS extension, and the file is linked to the HTML document using the link tag. The final option is imports directly within the style files. Question 7. What are the different positioning types in CSS? In CSS, there are five main types of positioning. Static. Static is the default type of positioning assigned to all elements. The elements are placed in the normal document flow and they cannot be moved. Relative. Relative positioning allows you to move an element relative to its initial position in the document. The element still remains in the normal flow. Absolute. Absolute positioning allows you to move an element and it forms a new flow. The position of the element is set relative to the first parent with a position other than static. If no such parent exists, it is positioned relative to the browser window. Fixed. Fixed positioning also forms a new flow. The element's position is calculated only relative to the browser window, ignoring any positioning of the parent. Sticky. Sticky combines two types of positioning. Within the visible area of the browser, the element behaves like fixed, but as you scroll, it scrolls with its parent which is similar to the behavior of relative or absolute. The positioning is relative to the parent block, even if the parent itself does not have any specified positioning. Question 8. Can you explain the CSS box model? The box model allows you to calculate the total space an element will occupy on the page. It includes the content itself, padding, inner margin, 
border, element border, and margin, outer margin. Thus, the total size of the element will consist of these parameters. If the element is given a width of 50 pixels, padding of 10, border of 1, and margin of 10, the total size will be 92 pixels. 50 is the width, 40 is the sum of padding and margin on each side, and 2 is the border on each side. If we want the element's size to remain exactly 50 pixels as specified, we can use the box sizing property with the value border box. And a few questions from JavaScript. The most popular one, alongside doc type from HTML, is data types in JavaScript. Remember, there are currently eight main types in JavaScript. These are string, this one is simple, number, which includes both integer values and floating point values. Big int was introduced to allow developers to work with numbers of arbitrary length. The indicator for big int is the letter n at the end of the number. The next type is a boolean value, which can be either true or false. Symbol is a unique identifier, while object, null, and undefined are values that represent missing data. Although null is a separate type, if you check it with the type of operator, it will return object. This is a historical error, and it's important to mention. To determine a data type, you can use the mentioned type of operator. The difference between two equals and three equals, or more precisely between loose and strict equality. Loose equality simply compares the values, while strict equality additionally compares their types. To clarify, it can be said that in JavaScript there is often a need to compare values. Sometimes the data types of the values being compared can be different. If we use loose comparison between the number 1, a number and a string, we get true. In strict comparison, that is, with three equals, we additionally check the equality of types. This means that the two values are coerced to the same type. Even though the values are identical, their types are different, and as a result we get false. Question 11. What is strict mode in JavaScript? Strict mode in JavaScript allows for a stricter version of JavaScript syntax. It converts some errors that the JavaScript interpreter would usually ignore by default into exceptions. This is why, in most cases, developers aim to enable this mode. There are three ways to enable it. Add the line use strict at the beginning of the document. In this case, strict mode will apply to the entire document. Add the line use strict inside a function. This way, strict mode will only apply within that function. The third option requires no action. In ES6, modules were introduced, and strict mode is enabled automatically within them. This means that during script file transpilation, the line use strict is added automatically with bubble. Question 12. What's the difference between a function declaration and a function expression? A function declaration is a function created in the main flow of the document. We start by specifying the function keyword, then the function name, and describe its logic within curly braces. A function expression is a function assigned to a variable. In other words, it's a function declaration in the context of an assignment. The main difference between these types is that a function declaration is created by the interpreter before the code is executed. Therefore, it can be called even before its declaration without causing an error. This is possible due to a mechanism called hoisting. The final section is a practical task. You need to create a function that checks if a string is a palindrome and returns a boolean value. A palindrome is a word that reads the same forwards and backwards. The description already provides a hint for the main logic. That is, you need to take the original word, reverse it, and compare it with the string passed to the function. Let's look at the logic with an example of a basic function. The first thing we do is split the string into an array of characters. Remember this trick. Strings are not very flexible for manipulation. So if the task involves working with a string, in 90% of cases, it requires transforming it into an array. After splitting the original word, we have an array of characters. Now we need to reverse this array using the reverse method. After that, we join the reversed array back into a word using join, and we compare it with the word passed to the function, returning the result with return since the function needs to return a boolean value. Pay close attention to the task conditions and make sure to follow the requirements. As for the other two functions, they do the same thing but use a more advanced approach, either using method chaining or ES6 syntax. For such a solution, you'll earn bonuses from a technical specialist. 
That's all for today. If you liked the idea and want to support the release of new videos, be sure to hit the like button. Also, you can support the channel on Buy Me A Coffee. See you in the next video. Bye.